Well, hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Dorado. Welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. As you can see, we're coming to you from the Embassy Suites in Syracuse, New York, where the Cowboys are getting ready to move into semifinal round action against uh, Seton Hall and hopefully get into that final game on Sunday and try to move on to the Final Four. But first things first, uh, so far so good here in the East Regional. You know, the East Regional treated us uh, very well back in uh, 1995. I hope it does the same thing uh, this weekend so we can, uh, you know, go on to Indianapolis. But last weekend when we uh, went to Buffalo, we played just a great basketball game against Hofstra and beat them 86-66, to 66, followed it up with another fine performance against Pepperdine and beat them eight points, 75-67. Uh, I know all coaches, no matter whether you're a rookie coach or you've been in the, in the game for a long time like yourself, that first NCAA tournament game, kind of time to bring out the roll aids. It's a little antsy for a lot of coaches. You don't have players that are going to uh, really react. Through the years, there have been a lot of uh, high seeds getting knocked off that first game, and there's no doubt there are butterflies on the part of uh, a lot of us as we go in and to the NCAA, you know, uh, this was my 21st trip to take a, a ball club to the NCAA, and it's still just as much fun as it was in 1974 when I took the Blue Jays of Creighton uh, down to Oral Roberts University to uh, play uh, Kansas. We'd won one game prior to that, but the NCAA is a special time of the year. This year, you know, there weren't very many upsets that first game, but there were a lot of them in the second round. A lot of teams went down, number one seeds, number two seeds, number three seeds. But our ball club certainly proved that uh, they belong in the Sweet 16. And now when you look at the teams that are left, and you know we are doing this before the games are ever played, uh, it's the most wide open uh, NCAA tournament that I've ever seen. You had to look at uh, Michigan State, you have to look at uh, Duke as the two top teams. But the other 14 ball clubs, any of them, believe me, uh, are good enough to get to Indianapolis. Because the first round was in Buffalo, second round uh, in the semifinals and finals of the East Regional, just a little two and a half, three hours down the road here in Syracuse, the team stayed up here east and uh, explain that decision. Well, we did it because uh, the NCA arranges for all your transportation and uh, normally they're really good about getting your charter out after you play and we wanted to get our team back so they could go to class on Monday and Tuesday and uh, then we're going to come right back to Syracuse on Wednesday. But they scheduled a flight for 1130, and we weren't going to get back in until about 3 o'clock in the morning. Marilyn Middlebrook, our academic advisor, checked, and she felt like that all the players, with the exception of two, probably could uh, miss uh, a couple of days. Uh, we sent Andre Williams, Jason Keep back uh, with the band and with the spirit groups. Uh, but what happened, they didn't get home until 5 o'clock in the morning because oh. the plane was delayed. And of course, so we stayed up here and we had study hall, and, uh, but we did some sightseeing. We got to see the uh, Can Montreal Canadiens play the uh, Buffalo Sabres. And a lot of guys have never seen a big time hockey game. And I think all of us enjoyed that. And also we got to see one of the great sights in the world, Niagara Falls. And so we, we did a little sightseeing beside play basketball. Some of us stayed outside the bus and watched the falls longer than others. And we won't mention who, <laughs> who took a quick venture out and came back in. Well, I tell you what, I, my advice is to see Niagara Falls in the summertime. <laughs> I'd seen it in the summertime. And believe me, I was one of them to jump back on that bus because it was a little cool. Yeah, that mist is blowing <laughs> in the summertime. It's a lot easier to handle than it was that particular day. Eddie mentioned the winds over Hofstra and Pepperdine. Well, we're going to take a look at those when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Eddie Sutton Show is well, Welcome back, and indeed, the Cowboys open play in Buffalo against Hofstra. And boy, we heard all we wanted to hear up to that particular game about Speedy Claxton. He was the real deal. He was the real deal, and I tell you, you know, people, uh, when you look at film, sometimes you can't appreciate how quick a player is. Everyone had told us that, you know, uh, some of the pro scouts had told Coach Williams, that he's going to be an NBA player someday and the quickness that he had. And the first time he touched the ball, <laughs> he left Joe Atkins standing there like uh, he was in slow motion. But then once Joe recognized how quick he was, he really did a good job defensively on him. And uh, that was a real key, uh, slowing Claxton down. And we jumped out, I think, uh, 17 points at halftime. Uh, Desmond had the sensational game, 30 points. Had five guys in double figures, shoot 54% from the field, out-rebound them. 
Uh, so it was really an outstanding game, but the defense was the big key. And this was a game where you wanted your players to jump out, send the message early, hey, no upset tonight. Cowboys were behind two minutes into the game, but ran off a 12-0 spurt. They got him up by 10, and Mason was right in the middle of that. And from that point on, the message was sent, and we just kind of played with that lead the rest of the game. Well, I think we built on it. I think uh, we, we were up uh, 43 to 26 at halftime. But then in that second half, they did score a few more points, uh, but we still had scored 43 to 40. We went to uh, our uh, matchup zone, yes. and uh, they hit some terrific shots there late, or it could have been even a, a wider margin than what it was. You know, you made reference to this, and I think all coaches go through this. When you have to play a team in the NCAA tournament, it works the other way because they have the same problem with you. But you can only go on film. You can only go on tape. On oh, Seattle reports, and you really don't know how big, how fast, how strong, how slow a player is until you actually get out there and go up the floor a couple of times. Hofstra was a very, very good basketball team. Believe me, we're not 20 points better than they are day in and day out. Uh, they had uh, had a terrific year. Uh, we mentioned Claxton, but they had Richardson. They had some other good players, and uh, we just played one of the best games we played all year. You know, we've had some some good performances, but I thought that. If you're going to rank the top five or six games that we played all season long, Hofstra had to be one of the best games. And there you see the halftime score. The Cowboys up by 17, 43-26. And coming out in the second half in any game, you want to extend that lead for the most part. Never let Hofstra say you're going to get back into it. It got to be 22 pretty early in the second half. Well, what's happened uh, numerous times this year is we would come out of the dressing room, regardless of what our coaches have said, and it'll be a little flat. And... Uh, We've talked about this uh, before. Uh, there are four or five minute periods in a game. The game's 40 minutes, but there are 20 minutes there that are even more important. First five of the game, last five before halftime, the first five to start the second half, and the most important five, of course, the last five minutes of the contest. But we came out of the dressing room smoking. I mean, our guys were focused, and I could feel even getting ready for Hofstra. Boy, how intent they were as we showed them film, and. I guess they looked at more film maybe than uh, yep. any any team we played this year because the NCAA was so important to them. Uh, they they lost their opportunity to win the, the Big 12 tournament, the Big 12 round robin. And so the one goal that is the most important today, people can talk about the league championship, the most important, and that how your team is remembered so many times is how well you do in the NCAA tournament. So I knew this team was focused for Hofstra. Yeah, later on in the show, you're gonna hear from Joe Atkins and uh, Brian Montanati and they're going to tell you in their own words exactly what Eddie had to say about how, how much this meant to them to get to the tournament and continue uh, to move on. Mason put on a show, as he has done so many times in his career, uh, when he gets in that zone, he's tough to stop. He uh, just uh, did everything right, and uh, I think he was uh, so impressive to uh, all of the uh, sports writers in the East. You know, that was another thing. Sometimes you play Eastern teams, uh, and especially somebody from um, the New York City area, they think that yeah. uh, they, they know a little more about basketball and maybe the play out in Oklahoma or other areas of the country is not as good and uh, your players might not be as, any, as good, but believe me, they opened everybody's eyes, the team did, and Desmond Mason in particular. The final score, the Cowboys win by 20. Game one of the, uh, the uh, tournament is in the books. Now, we'd seen Pepperdine just destroy Indiana. and. There are a lot of people out and about thought, hey, now maybe this is Pepperdine's four-team tournament to win. Obviously, you had a healthy respect for Pepperdine coming in, but it really was kicked up after the Indiana game. I don't think any of us were surprised because we looked at some film on Pepperdine that they might beat Indiana, but we never thought in our wildest dreams that there was any way they could beat Indiana like they did. And so that did open everyone's eyes, and I think it made our team focus even more on getting ready for the, the wave and uh, they were a little different uh, the way they played the game. We hadn't played anyone like Pepperdine, and uh, we only had one day to prepare for them. They full court press, they trap, they change defenses, and we really felt like that our guard play really had to be solid and not turn the ball over too many times. And lo and behold, we hadn't played a minute, and we'd already turned the ball yeah. over twice. But uh, we called a timeout, got the guys regrouped, got them relaxed a little bit, and uh, made some adjustments as the game progressed and uh, really beat a very good basketball team. Pepperdine 
was not a fluke to be in the NCAA tournament. There are people probably think that league is not that tough, but Gonzaga last year mm -hmm. proved to everyone that is a tough conference, and Gonzaga still proving to everybody it's a tough league. You know, you mentioned that we came out a little antsy, and, and all the things that you went ahead and, and, and preached, and we had a great scouting report once again on this club, and knew pretty much what they were going to do. But again, I think that's another instance uh, or another example of what I was talking about. You don't really have a feel if you don't play these guys until you get out on the court and see what they're doing. Maybe the uh, one of the two or three most athletic teams we faced. Uh, good size inside, great perimeter play, quickness uh, all around. And uh, I think that uh, we shocked them a little bit. I don't mm -hmm. think uh, they felt like after beating Indiana that uh, they were going to lose to us. But uh, again, the thing that wins ball games when you get to this level, good solid defense, taking care of the basketball, good shot selection, and then playing hard. And we were able to do all of those. A guy who stepped up his game uh, certainly against Pepperdine, Fred had a, himself another great game. That's four straight he has strung together since Kansas City. We hope it continues this weekend <laughs> because Fred is really playing just lights out. I mean, he was he played so well in Kansas City. In Buffalo, he was just as impressive. Uh, he's given us that inside uh, play that we need not only offensively but defensively as well. Cowboys were up at halftime, 35-31. and. Uh, you'd say, well, that wasn't much, but I tell you, in a game like this, they made a couple of runs. We never gave them the lead. What was the feeling at halftime? I think the feeling was that uh, if we uh, we quit turning the ball over, uh, we had too many mis miscues that first half, and we made an adjustment uh, in that we kept telling our players we have to get the ball into the high post area mm -hmm. because we felt like that was a soft spot in their defense. We got it in there. We were able to go high-low a couple times, but more importantly, it made the defense collapse, and then we were able to kick the ball off to the wings, and Joe Atkins hit some big shots, Glennon hit one, Desmond hit them, and uh, all of a sudden we got on that run, and our defense pushed out harder, and they're, they like to shoot the trays as well as we do, and uh, the second half, uh, we just really took them out of their offense. They made a concerted effort to get the ball inside, uh, early in the second half, Andre Williams comes in and has a real big momentum turning play on that block of Shepard. Andre Williams was very instrumental in our being able to stay ahead. We, I think, had a three-point lead, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden they break free for a, a, what was going to be a layup, and he came from the help side of the floor, blocked the shot, got the rebound. We get it out, we go down, we score, now we're still up three, the pressure's still on them to catch us. And from then on, uh, it was uh, just a, a different story. But Andre Williams he didn't play a lot of minutes, but he really helped us defensively inside. He rebounded, and he made that big block. The Cowboys win it 75-67 and move into the Sweet 16 for the fourth time since you've been here, your 11th trip to the Sweet 16. And it gets sweeter every time. <laughs> We're going to talk about how sweet it is with some of the Cowboy players when we return. It'll be Joe Atkins and Brian Montanati who joins us here at the Embassy Suites. We'll see you after this timeout. Well, welcome back to the show. And as promised, Joe Atkins, Brian Montanati with us on the player segment. And fellas, first of all, congratulations. As a group, we've talked about this all year long. You set a goal, one of your many goals. The seniors wanted to get to the Sweet 16. Well, now you're there. Well, it's a great honor. Um, I think at the beginning of the season, as you know, we all set goals as a team and, you know, individual goals. And one of my main focuses was to make it to the Sweet 16. Um, for the seniors, we had never been in this situation before. And now we're enjoying all the hype. What about it, Brian? Again, driven by that, but certainly the season's far from over. In fact, it just begins here this weekend. Yeah, you know, this is just a great time of year for us. And, you know, we worked our butts off to get here and getting up at 6 in the morning. and. You know, we had a lot of talk about it at the beginning of the year, like Joe said, and, you know, just being here right now and, you know, enjoying this atmosphere with our teammates and our family and friends, it's just, you know, a big thrill for us. Both of you guys, as all the seniors, have had a lot to do with this season, and I don't know if you even know this or care at this point, but the 26 wins that we take in to the uh, semifinal round against Eaton Hall, only seven other teams in the history of Oklahoma State basketball have ever won more games in one season. So you've moved yourself up the ladder a little bit. But you want to go a little higher, don't you? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I wasn't aware of that. And, you know, to, <clears throat> to have a goal like that this early in the, 
early and you know it's many hopefully more games to come you know we're excited about that but you know we always feel that you're just by how you finish and you know I, our goals are set and they're not a, they're not all accomplished yet. Brian coming out of the uh, Big 12 tournament uh, obviously we wanted to get there we wanted to get to the finals but the real prize is the NCAA championship and you guys I won't say refocus but there was a more energy, maybe a re-energizing of the team between Kansas City and going to Buffalo. Yeah, we had a, a couple talks, you know, with the seniors and everything, and it was gut check time for us, and you know, it was time for us to put up or shut up, you know, and it was just a big step, you know, that we were have to uh, overcome is, you know, the last two weeks of the season, just put it behind us because if we do well in this tournament, you know, they're not going to worry about what happened the last two weeks of the season, and you know, we we just want to, uh, you know, continue on playing in this tournament and just, you know, have as much fun as we can. It's unfair, as Joe said, sometimes you get judged by what you do in the postseason, but the fact is you're on a nice roll now, and, and again, uh, for those people watching, because of the schedule, we had to pre-record the show, the Cowboys will have already played a Seton Hall, but the excitement really began to build after winning at Buffalo. We stayed up here in the East, and how was that for you guys to stay? It's some pluses and minuses for both staying on the road. Uh, well, all the minor pluses. Um, I I've enjoyed our stay. We've enjoyed our stay here. I think as a ball club, and we missed a lot of school. But I mean, when you're winning, I think everything's okay. And um, now we're traveling, and you know, our, our mindset is now we're focused. We forgot about what happened in Buffalo. Now we have to get focused on another job and task we have here in Syracuse. Brian and I enjoyed that hockey game. I knew Brian. I don't know how many other guys knew much about what was going on, but we enjoyed that, didn't we? Oh yeah, it was big time. You know, going and seeing the NHL game and how fast paced it is, but. My team, the Red Wings, weren't playing, but I'll take the Sabres anytime. I know you guys like to talk about your senior teammates, but obviously we've had others step up this year. When you win 26 games and you do as well as, as this team has done, everybody has to contribute, and I think that was obvious in Buffalo. Uh, and let's talk about one of the newcomers, Andre Williams. He had a big block in that game against Pepperdine, helped turn that around. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, Andre set out a few games for us, and it might have hurt, hurt him early, but now he's getting back to where he's back in the groove of things and understanding more his role as, for this ball club. And, you know, he's going to be a great player in the future, and now he, he's accepted his role like most young guys have to, and he's a big asset to our ball club. You yeah. got to trade out every once in a while, go against Andre in practice every once in a while, push and shove a little bit. He's coming on, though, isn't he? Yeah, Andre's come a long ways, you know, and that's just the hard work he's going to, you know, put into it. and. You know, as long as he stays patient and, you know, not jump into things too early and, you know, just stays calm, he's going to be a, a great player. Real quick review of the games in Buffalo. You jumped all over Hofstra about three or four minutes into the game and I won't say cruise, but set the tone right off the bat, Brian, that this was not going to be upset city for Hofstra that night. Uh, we were watching, you know, the tournament the last two days and there wasn't really too many, you know, low seeds beating the higher seeds. and. You know, they were thinking, uh, you know, maybe Friday that, you know, we might have one or two and some people in Buffalo, you know, they had some doubt in us and we came out, you know, and we, uh, we started the game a little bit flat, but then uh, we put that behind us and, you know, played great basketball the rest of the way. Joe, you've done it your entire career. That shot out of the corner against Pepperdine with people hanging all over you, a leaner here and there, big three, really shut the door on the last time. That's just typical for you, though. I mean, the tougher the shot, seemingly, the better it is. <laughs> Well, I guess so. Um, I've, I've been fortunate enough to be put in situations to make some tough shots. Um, I don't know if I should take all the shots sometime. Um, I, I get in trouble sometimes for taking shots, but I'm, I'm one of the more confident guys on the ball club, and, you know, I like to be in that situation. You guys know better than anybody in a tournament. You can Sometimes you can be hot from the field, sometimes you're not, but you can always be hot defensively, and really that's been the stabilizer all year long. Yeah, that's something we're going to have to win with, you know. And, and for us to get to the, the next round of the tournament, you know, we're going to have to, you know, shut some key players down in the next teams we play. And if we do that, I think, you know, the sky's the limit for us. You agree there, too. Defense isn't always the, the best part of the game to talk about and have to work on, but it's the one that gets you where you need to be. Uh, most definitely. Um, I think this school's always prided themselves on defense since Coach Sutton has been here. And, you know, we might didn't defend as well in the past couple of years, but we've gotten back to the things that we've done in the past, and now we're being more successful. Brian, Joe, we appreciate you coming down and joining us on this week's show. Continue good luck, and hey, maybe we have a few more shows this season before it's all over. We have the question of the week and the notebook still coming up. We'll have all that when we return to the Eddie Sutton Show. Well, indeed, it's time for our question of the week, and you see, hey, it is a short turnaround, a lot of work in a short period of time. Good question, Chris. Chris is one of the biggest Cowboy fans <laughs> I know. Uh, it's difficult, but we try to prepare... Uh, for that game in case we play it. Look at a lot of film, but it's tough. 
Okay, our notebook. Well, we're going to take a look at this to set the see the sights, and obviously the Cowboys are able to see the sights. That's always been something you try to do since you've been here. Anytime we go someplace during the regular season, the NCAA, and there's something to see, I want the young men to have not that opportunity. So we do go look at some sights. Two Big 12 teams still alive going into the Sweet 16. Cyclones and Cowboys. I hope both of us get to Indianapolis. You know, one thing that was very obvious in Buffalo, should be obvious here in, in Syracuse, is the fact that a lot of Cowboy fans followed this team wearing orange. They were wonderful in Buffalo, and they chanted Eddie, Eddie after we won the game, and I was most appreciative. And we hope that we have that big a turnout here in Syracuse, and I think we will. And I know as we get ready to wrap up this show from Syracuse, how proud you are of this team, but they want a little bit more. You know, you get greedy when yeah. you get to this point, so I hope that uh, we do get uh, real greedy and beat Seton Hall and go on and either beat the Gators or beat uh, Duke. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. We appreciate all the help we had here in Syracuse for Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at the Embassy Suites, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody. The Eddie Sutton Show.